Man, look at all these look at all these gray hairs on my beard over here. You talking about your wizard hairs? Yeah, my my wizard hair. Well, you call them wizard hairs. I'm like, what's good? Yeah. <laughs> if you're gonna do that, you gotta be like, woo! <laughs> woo! And welcome back to the new and improved Rafi and Klee Studios extravaganza thing. I'm just kidding. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> it's all of those things. Yeah, it's all the, the extravaganza of us in the studio. So we have a question from one of you guys today. It's a really interesting question uh, that I could really relate to. Um, and go ahead. Who is yeah, that? I love this question. Our question comes from Derek Hall. Hi, Rafi. I like your honest, no nonsense approach to answering questions. I've watched a few of your videos now and wondered if you had this question before. What if you didn't follow your path to explore your art and creativity, regret it and keep coming back to it? Is it realistic to make the transition into the art world late in life? Or would artists like yourself say it is no longer realistic? Ooh, that is such a good question. Yeah, it is. And the short answer is, we would never say it's unrealistic. Exactly. Exactly. But let's get into this. This question hits home for me because I basically spent the majority of my life uh, doing that, pretty much. Like, I really wanted to get into an art career. When I left high school, I remember telling my dad, hey, I want to be an artist. I don't care what you say. And then I went into the family business. And then when I got sick and tired of the family business, I left the family business and went to go work at some place and moved my way up through the corporate ladder. And then was a manager for years and a corporate trainer and basically spent 12 years of my life in that corporate environment. Only had art as not even a side hobby because I maybe created a work of art. I would get inspired to be an artist and I would go through these little spurts of creating work for like a month and then I'd give up because it just seemed like it was impossible and it was easier to do the corporate thing that I was doing. Very familiar with that getting started and quitting and getting started and quitting and getting motivated and quitting. By the time that uh, I went crazy and lost my mind and left the corporate world and I, the reason I say that I went crazy and lost my mind and went towards... Uh, something other than the corporate world was because all of my friends at the time, all my corporate friends were like, have you lost your mind? You have this secure job and you are just walking away from it. And I was like, yep, because it's not what I want to do anymore. Yeah, they were like, it's impractical, man. Why would you give up stability and security for your flights of fancy or whatever? I'm sure they didn't say flights of fancy. Yeah, they didn't say it. <laughs> One of the things that I was struggling with the most was that I was older now. So, like, there was all this regret because, man, if I was going to do something, I should have done it when I was 18. And then I should have done it when I was in my 20s. And I should have done it when I was in my 30s. And uh, there, there was just a lot of regret. What I realized later on was that that was just an excuse that I was using. Um, to, to still not do it? Yeah, to still not do it. Like, oh, I should have. I missed my opportunity. If you uh, still have this in your heart and this is what you want to do, you are never too old. Never, ever, ever too old. Uh, there are so many actors, directors, musicians, artists, people that got started later in life in their 40s their 50s and 60s and made an amazing career out of it uh, simply because they decided to just get started and that's ultimately what happened with me with us is that we just got started yeah i mean i've had struggles when it comes to music and thinking to myself like that ship has sailed <laughs> if ever i hear myself saying that i know it's like whack perspective and often it's just a matter of rewriting your your narrative about what a successful art career looks like because look i'm i have the music in my heart yeah. i'm going to sing until the day that i can no longer sing but i'm not going to be on american idol right because they have a strict no geezer age limit of like 20 something yeah like 28 i think is the oldest you could be on and that's the problem is that we're dealing with a lot of the culture and like the ideas that are out in our society and in culture kind of integrates itself into our minds even though there's always always evidence to the opposite of it it is not just young people that go out there and get successful we get attacked uh, here on YouTube a lot and on Instagram because a lot of people assume that the only reason that we have a following 
is because we're young and we got in on the ground floor on Instagram and all that stuff or on YouTube. And like we did not get in on the ground floor. We are not spring sh- chickens. We barely know how to use the equipment that we're using. Hilarious. For about 15 years, I had a video camera and I was filming my kids and like doing all this different stuff, but I had never put it out there because it was too terrifying for me. And it's only within the last few years that we started doing these videos because it is a part of what I want to do. It's the same thing with our music, the same thing with my art, the same thing with Clee's jewelry. It's a part of us. It's a part of wanting to create. If you love to create, then you are an artist, so create. Absolutely. Saying it's too late is just another excuse that you're trying to keep yourself safe, but that's not what you actually want. Yeah, exactly. That is not what you want. You want to live life to the fullest. You want to you wanna go out there and take risks. You want to have fun. Now, the thing is, uh, my story, I quit my job. I left that life behind. And that is not something that I recommend for anyone. That is not something that I recommend for the faint of heart or even people that are not the faint of heart because... You really have to make it a huge priority. And there's all kinds of other insecurities that that come into play there. One of the things that I look back at and I wish I would have done was while I had my corporate job, made my art career a priority. So I had my income from my corporate job and then I had my art career going on and just really understanding that like sure I've got bosses and I've got co-workers and I've got people that have their responsibility and this is what's important to them but as long as I remembered who I was during that entire thing then I'd remember that my priorities my art my life came first uh that job was just secondary now I didn't live that way the way that I lived was my job comes first and everything else comes after and Really, unless you're doing something that you absolutely love and adore doing as a career, that shouldn't be the case. Nor should it be the case anyway, because you should always come first. And whatever it is that you're doing uh, should always come second. You know, I also look back at myself in my late teens, early 20s, and how passionate I was about art and always had like some job going on. And like I was kind of uh, invested in the arts, but like also... I didn't know what I was doing. Like, it took me a decade to even be the kind of person who could handle an art career. The reason that I was holding on to the jobs and, like, putting stuff aside and, like, starting something and getting really excited is because I had all these ideas of what it meant to be an artist. And those ideas, I never really stopped to think about them. Like, you know, the idea of being an artist was, like, you're starving and you're this and you, like, suffer for your art. And, oh, it's so horrible. <laughs> you know, like, it's horrible but but satisfying at the same time. And, like, that is not the life that I wanted to live. I just wanted to be free to express myself in the way that I wanted to express myself. And, like, we definitely do not live a dramatic artist life now. I am a dude that lives in a house and has a wife, and we create art for a living. That's what we do. Although, we did live in our car. Yeah, maybe. Maybe whatever you think is fine. I mean, whatever. (laughs) And I think that that's about it. Uh, Derek, just remember, um, your life is your life. It doesn't matter how old you are. It's never too late. It's never too early. You just get started whenever it is that you want to get started. Um, and my advice really would be just get started now, just get started. Now you want to do this thing with your life. Don't, uh, take another moment for granted. Just do it now while you're doing whatever else it is that you're doing. Just live that moment. Now, if that's what you want to be, be that right now in whatever way possible in whichever, with whatever tools you have available to you right now, just get started now. I second that emotion. Thank you so much, Derek, for your awesome question. It really is an awesome question. And go forth and do your thing. Yeah, Derek, do your thing. Thank you so much for that question. And I'm curious what your thoughts are. I know that a lot of you guys, some of you are older, some of you are younger. And I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on the whole age thing and how maybe that was something that stopped you or something that early on you were like, I don't care. I'm going to do this anyway, (laughs) regardless of what society thinks. 
Um, just leave that in the comment section below. I'd love to read those comments. And thank you so much for watching, you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. And on a side note, just want to let you guys know, we are back on track with all of that. <laughs> and if you like this video and you want to watch more like this, go ahead and click right over here to subscribe. And that's it. Say goodbye, Clee. Good day. Adios.